I don't fight fair in a street fight. If you ain't cheating, then you ain't winning, son. This is no ordinary street fight. This is the crowd, nigga. We defeat the enemies with this. Use this one simple street fight ending technique and end any fight in three seconds or less. These are secret teachings from ancient Japan. Nijitsu. Yeah, I used to train Navy SEALs. Tactical, man. Tactical. Yeah. Jiu-Jitsu, whatever. Tiger Claw in the face. I rake. Over and done, you know? Simple techniques. Stupid grappling stuff. Oh! All right, so we all know that here at Gutter Fighting Secrets, we like to trash these RBC guys. We like to really just make fun of reality-based combatives, not because it's completely useless, but because a lot of the time people go on and they learn this stuff and they watch a DVD or whatever, and they think, you know, oh, I'm good. Like, I can chin jab them, and I know how to knee them in the balls, and, like, I can throw a few chops, and, like, hey, like, that's good, but it's not, you know, because everybody out there and their mother these days especially street people, are studying combatives. They're studying, like, real combatives, boxing, wrestling, MMA, jiu-jitsu, whatever you have it, Muay Thai, right? And I harp on this because I don't want any of our audience ever running into the situation where, like, you watch a couple of videos about the chin jab and the chop and stuff, and you think, like, I'm good. Like, I, I can just stop training. You know, training is a, it, it's a type of thing where these are perishable skills. And if you don't train weekly it really starts to diminish you start to have diminishing returns on your investment and your investment being that you know you took the time to put in some work and program stuff into your muscle memory you took the time to like sweat and put sweat equity into it right the old saying a pint of uh sweat is worth a gallon of blood or whatever right and it's true but if you don't keep practicing this stuff and you don't keep your cardio in good condition if you don't keep the engine inside you, your internal organs running well, if you don't keep your strength up, then it starts to have a really diminishing returns. So the purpose of me making this video is yes, to make fun of these reality-based combatives guys. And I'll get into that in a second, but also to remind you guys, don't get arrogant, don't get cocky. And don't think that like, since you learned some shit in basic training, or since you like learned some shit, like for whoever, that you can like not keep training. You have to keep training. Why? Because a lot of people out there like I say, are going to MMA gyms. They're going to boxing gyms and they're studying this stuff pretty regularly. And if you think that the street criminals out there aren't practicing this stuff on some type of regular basis, whether it's just, you know, sparring with each other or literally going out and getting in fights on the street, like anyone with the balls, with the cojones to attack you is obviously going to be somewhat well-versed in how to attack people because they wouldn't if they didn't do that, right? If they didn't feel confident in victimizing you, then they wouldn't do it in the first place. They'd pick some woman to pick on, right? You got to think that. I'm always thinking that in the back of my head. If I ever have a guy staring me down or whatever, I never get cocky. I never want to say like, I, you know, I do whatever all the time. Like I can just fight this guy. Well, any look at me, like any, anybody fucking staring at me, I've got fucking cool guy tattoos and like some muscle mass, right? So like I, anyone looking at me, like they want to fight me. I'm like, fuck this guy. He's obviously, he obviously knows how to handle himself. And like any of you too, I know most of the guys who watch this channel on a regular basis, most of you like are judo guys, are knife fighting guys, are MMA guys, whatever. Like a lot of you guys are ex-military. So like anyone looking at you specifically that they want to fight you, you got to really keep in the back of your mind. Well, this guy probably knows what he's doing. Like Sun Tzu said, never underestimate your opponent because that's when you get in trouble. So What's my beef with RBC? I think we all know, but like it really is an old, outdated way of thinking. It is an outdated way of thinking that, ah, I know the chin jab and I know some chops to the throat and I know um, like two ways to sprawl a takedown or like put my thumbs in their eyes and twist their head. Yeah, like that's way better than knowing nothing. And if you were to like be in a last ditch survival effort, like on the battlefield, whatever, like way better than knowing nothing but you got to think like in today's complex environment we need complex solutions for complex problems and certainly like the people that we're facing on the street now it's a complex problem they watch ufc 
they fucking they they practice this shit. I'll just say it like that. Why? How do I know? I know. All right, guys. I grew up with criminals. I I did, and I I know that these guys are out there training because they're my friends. So you have to really like keep that in the back of your mind. And I want you guys to always go out there and strive to get better. You don't have to dedicate your life to being a martial artist, but you should, if nothing else, be doing some cardio once or twice a week, minimum, hitting the bag, you know, running or doing the cardio bike or swimming or whatever, and then lifting some weights. And then, you know, that's like a, the fucking bare minimum, bare minimum. And if you're not in shape enough to do that, well, just go until you can do something. On the next level would be train, go to a boxing gym, go to a whatever, you know, jujitsu class would be ideal. Go to, go to something and keep yourself in shape, go to a Muay Thai kickboxing class twice a week, whatever it is. And then on the higher levels of it would be somebody who's a real warrior who practice, you know, practices their skill set constantly to keep them sharp. It's like a knife. If I've got, got a knife on me right now, surprise, surprise. If this thing, if I'm always, if I'm always using this thing. And I'm never fucking keeping it sharp and I never sharpen. It'll get dull and then it won't cut through much. But if I keep it nice and sharp and I sharpen it once a week, well, then if I need to cut through a big ass rope or like whatever else, right, it'll work and it'll do the job and it'll do the job very smoothly. And that's that's a good analogy for for practicing your combative skill sets, whether that's shooting, whether that's fighting, whether that's going out and doing patrols or driving or medical skills or whatever else you could think of. Even your night vision shit. Like I, I know how how many guys do you know that have a nice ass set of nods and they never use them. They never shoot with them. Well, then they're just a nice ass set of nods. Might as well give them away to somebody who's gonna fucking train with that shit. It's really an important dynamic to really like think about. And as far as like taking gutter fighting and making it more modernized, well, I'm doing this modern gutter fighting, and we have programs available on gutter fighting secrets dot com that you can download we've got our grappling program we're going to be adding a lot of stuff to the uh to the website here but for now we've at least got the grappling program we've got the basic warrior basic stuff we've got stuff that will like lend itself well to defending yourself against a boxer against a wrestler tommy from burutsu labs also tries to make gutter fighting more modernized for the modernized enemy the, the ancient jiu-jitsu had a saying that if you do not adapt to the changing times you will perish and that is very true for these days. So yes, reality-based combatives is good for a base. It's good for like mass training people and gutter fighting. What I would include in this gutter fighting, you, you train a, a group of people, you give them eight hours of training, you send them out. It's better than nothing. Right. But we're not going on better than nothing. We're warriors. We want to have a skill set that we can rely on and fall back on if we need to. And this, this hand to hand stuff is not like, I don't know about you, but I'm not a ninja. I don't go out there chopping people in the neck and like carrying them off. But it's if I need to fucking survive against some big juiced out fucking Guido meathead, like I have the skill set that I can survive through that. I probably will get rocked a, a bunch. I'll probably end up bruised and hurt, but at least I'll be able to survive through it and hopefully overcome him in that situation. And then on the other side of things is, if I ever need to like take somebody out, I don't have anything on me. I don't have this. I don't have this. I don't have a pistol or whatever else kind of weapon on me. If I really need to do it, I can do it. And I can carry on with the mission with the situation. But I want you guys to really think about, you know, your training and what you're doing. And if you are falling victim to any of these characters that we put before you at the beginning here, then I want you to think again because it's stupid. And I want you to really just remind yourself that you ain't shit i ain't shit you ain't shit and you're never gonna be shit unless you train consistently and train hard until next time guys please remember that you are your first and last line of defense go to fightingcrease.com is the website if you want to check out any of our products on there if not do me a favor at least subscribe like the video comment down below it helps us in the algorithm and i'll see you in the next video guys cheers